As we roll along the stop Obamacare Express, conservative underground. Thank you, Scott Shannon. Thanks to all of you for being with us. Three hours a day, every day, it's all we ask. She is the second most hated Republican woman in the country and proud of it. Congresswoman Michelle Bachman is with us. How are you, Congresswoman? Oh, I am walking on air right now, Sean. The Minnesota Vikes just signed Brett Favre. I know. I, I saw that today, and uh, apparently um, I mean, another foray out of retirement. We are so thrilled. This gives Minnesota just a legitimate opportunity to be a national contender for the Super Bowl. We're going to be there. It's almost like Johnny Unite is coming back. We are so excited about having Favre as our quarterback. Well, I bet the people of Green Bay are just as excited as you are right now. But... <laughs> well, Minnesota's a kind of thrilled to talk about something other than the Senate recount about now. So we're pretty happy about this. Now, that's true. What do you, first of all, what do you make of the confusion, the infighting, the battle going on, going on among the Democratic Party over the public option and health care in general? Well, it shows that their formula is not a formula for success. The conservatives have a formula for success. It's interesting. Obama said that the conservatives want to embrace the status quo, and it is just the opposite, because Obama's answer to every problem is more of our money so that government can dominate yet one more industry. But conservatives are the ones who want to embrace true change in health care. Change the tax code so everyone can own and control their own health care, not their employer, not the government. We can have higher quality, greater innovation, better access, lower cost. It's the American way, American ingenuity. I can't wait to truly have health care reform, and Obama's plan isn't it, and that's why they're divided. Well, what, what, for example, I think a lot of people, Congresswoman, are being bamboozled into this idea um, that this uh, getting rid of the public option is, is a good thing. It, it, the, the problem with government-run health care is not just the public option, because even if they have these co-ops they're talking about, I think there's great danger here because the government's going to control and say who gets covered, who doesn't get covered, you know, what you can charge, what you can't charge, what benefits are covered, what benefits are not covered. And in that sense, it's still the outcome is still the same. There ceases to be private insurance. Am I reading that right? You're exactly reading it right. It's a look-alike, and this isn't just Sean Hannity or Michelle Bachman's word for it. Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid have both said, to, to borrow a Will Shakespeare line, a rose by any other name still smells as sweet. And they have said, it doesn't matter if it's called a public option or if it's a co-op, it's all the same thing. It's still incrementalism. Ask yourself at the end of the day, with the Democrats' plan, will government have more control over your health care or less? It's always more. Republicans want to do just the opposite. We want to put the people in charge of their health care, not the federal government, and bring down the cost to boot. You know, I've got to tell you, Congresswoman, every time I speak to you, I I understand why the left doesn't like you. And um, and I'm not kidding when I say whatever reason they put a a, a target on your back. And boy, they, they want to demonize you more than any other congressperson out there right now. And and when you because it's inspiring to me to hear you talk about liberty, to hear you talk about freedom. To hear you, you know, inspire people towards the capitalist system. We don't hear many politicians, even Republicans, say these things. Why? Well, here in the state of Minnesota, we have been a hallmark for innovation. We have 3M, for instance, that has given us some of the greatest medical breakthroughs. We had a guy invent in his garage a thing called the pacemaker, and suddenly we have a company, a worldwide company called Medtronic. Without this innovation, Americans' quality of life wouldn't be as rich and as full of quality, and the costs wouldn't be as low as they are. I am so excited about embracing innovation. Now that President Obama has created this firestorm with his unworkable solution. Now we have the attention of the American people, Democrats, independents, Republicans, and we can offer our winning solution for positively bringing down the cost and embracing innovation. And I couldn't be more excited. No, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't as well. But I, I've got to tell you, what do you make of where we are right now? Because I, I think a lot of people might be uh, might be persuaded that this battle is over. And I'm, I'm trying to get people to understand that they've got to remain engaged in this issue because I think this is really just a sleight of hand by the Democrats. And I think they're just trying to repackage uh, what is the public option, you know, use uh, slogan tested, poll tested, focus group tested, slogans, et cetera, bumper stickers 
uh, to try and create the impression that they've changed their their goal or their agenda here when I think, in fact, they just they just might go through this process more incrementally. Well, you're exactly right. That, that is what the liberals do all the time, and it's another page out of Saul Alinsky's playbook where they, where they decide to keep the same program, just give it another name. They've done it over and over throughout history. This is nothing new, but it's like Winston Churchill said, Sean, this isn't, this isn't the end. This isn't even the beginning of the end. We're just getting started. Remember, President Obama just redoubled his commitment saying he will pass his health care reform by the end of the year. So we can't let up for a moment. That's why people have to continue to go to the town halls, continue to melt the phone lines of their liberal members of Congress, and let them know, under no certain circumstances will I give the government control over my body and my health care decisions and speak it loudly, clearly, because they are now listening. Because you have a brilliant audience, they're doing exactly what you've told them to do. Well, it's not what I've told them to do. What's amazing about this congresswoman is this is organic. I mean, uh, it, this this is spontaneous. This is democracy in action. And I agree. I agree. But it's it's because of voices like yours and other commentators that have been telling the truth. Because let's face it, the mainstream media has embargoed this information. This, again, points to what Ronald Reagan said was the good, innate sense of the American people. We can trust the American people to do the right thing. Members of Congress may not be reading these bills, but the general public is reading the bills. And it's because of show like yours that the American people are so well informed. And calling their members of Congress Congress on the carpet, as they should. You know, both uh, Barack Obama and Kathleen Sebelius were asked the question, so will you be able to keep your doctor? I want you to respond to their answer on this. Uh, She on uh, one of the Sunday programs, and he had a town hall meeting in Montana last week. Here's how it went down. Everybody here who still has, who has currently private insurance, you know, you would more than likely still be on your private insurance plan. The idea that you would keep your own doctor is highly likely. More than likely. Highly likely. More than likely. Highly likely, more than likely, highly likely, more than likely. That doesn't sound very inspiring to me. (laughs) Well, remember, this is what they're trying to sell to the American people. Trust me. Do we really want to trust the people that are bombing at the Cash for Clunkers program who have now got us in debt four times what we were last year? I don't think the American people are buying what they have to sell anymore. And we know that because all we have to do is read the House version of the bill. You don't even get 20 pages into the bill, Sean, and the provision says that if you, lo- if you lose your insurance, your private insurance with your employer, you would be prohibited from buying another private insurance plan. Your only choice would be to go crawling to the federal government and take whatever it is that they have to give. So I, with all due respect, I believe that the president and uh, the health secretary are a little disingenuous in that statement. Do you know this congressman, Eric Massa? Do you know him? He was at this Nut Roots convention. I want to. I want to hear. I want to play for you an exchange that went on there and uh, get your reaction to this. I will vote for the Super Bowl. The communist, bill, even if you've you're being voted out. I will vote adamantly against the So why should we pressure your room? We should be pressuring the communists. I will vote adamantly against the interests of my district if I actually think what I'm doing is going to help. What that? I will vote against their opinion if I actually believe it will help. I will vote adamantly against the interests of my district. Did you ever hear a congressman say that before? <laughs> well, we may be calling him the ex-congressman. You know, if the if the people of his district, which tends to be a fairly conservative district, I think that's about the only ad that you'd need to run, I think, in the next election. The people are very smart and very intelligent, and they love our country. The people love America, and they don't want the snake oil that is being presented now to them when it comes to the government taking over health care. They've seen too much, Sean, with Bailout Nation. They know this is not going to work. Again, we trust the innate goodness and sense, common sense of the American people. And unfortunately, this congressman doesn't uh, perhaps have that same level of respect for the intelligence of the people in his district. Congresswoman, I got to tell you, it, it's an inspiration to know that there are people in Washington like yourself, as principled as you are, uh, defenders of liberty and freedom, and uh, we need more of you there. Thank you, as always, for being with us. And you're going to join us on TV tonight. I'll be on tonight. I can't wait. And you, you like you like my handle for you, the second most hated Republican woman in the country. Now, <laughs> Governor Palin's got a little run on you there, so you got to catch up. Well, like I said, that is excellent company to be in with the, with the Alaska former Alaska governor. So I'll take that. All right, Congressman Bachman, we'll see you on TV tonight. Also.